My name is Rev. Rachel Harrison, and this is the Recover Your Soul podcast, a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. I started Recover Your Soul after having profound changes in my life from my recovery of alcoholism, control addiction, and codependency. I was guided to share the tools and principles of spirituality and soul recovery to help others transform their lives as mine was transformed. For us to overcome external circumstances, we must first turn the attention to ourselves, focusing on inner change. Outer positive results in our lives will follow. As a spiritual coach, I can support you on your path to make real changes that will bring you a life of peace, happiness, connection, and abundance. Visit the website recoveryoursoul.net to book coaching sessions, read the blog, listen to some of my original music, and subscribe to receive email updates. I think of Recover Your Soul as a community. Follow us on social media and join the private Facebook group to support each other and connect. For an extra episode each week and to support this podcast, become a Patreon member or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. Welcome back to the Recover Your Soul podcast. I am Reverend Rachel Harrison, and I am grateful that you are choosing to spend your time with me here today. I wanted to do this episode about attack and about guilt and about relationships and how we don't even see that we are causing a battle that we're standing on a battlefield, an emotional battlefield with our weapons drawn and how painful that is for everyone involved and that in soul recovery, there is a solution to the pain by stopping the fight, by seeing it differently, by changing your perception, by being willing to turn within and to stop the attack. So that's what we're going to talk about today. As I was thinking about this podcast and having this be the recording that I was going to do today, I was sitting on my mom's back deck this morning. Unfortunately, Rich has been hit with another thing. Not only did he cut his finger off a couple months ago, but he came back from a trip with the kids to visit them in California and tested positive for COVID. So I immediately left and luckily have been able to not get sick because my mom had just recovered from COVID, so I'm staying at her house long story short. Anyway, aren't I lucky that I have a safe place to be? So I'm sitting on her back deck this morning, which is what we've been doing for the last week, having our coffee. And she moved into a new house after the fire that looks out over this beautiful open space. And right behind her is a concrete path that people are walking all along on the morning. And you see people running and you see people walking their dogs and you see people pushing baby carts and you see little kids on their little striders and you see people with their earbuds in talking to the air. And it's really kind of fun to watch my community. Well, this morning I'm sitting there and I'm having my coffee and I'm reading my spiritual studies and really enjoying the morning and thinking how fortunate I am that... I have the safe place to be and then I'm glad that Rich is getting better and just feeling really grateful for my life. And this couple walks by and they're fighting. And I see the man with his shoulders hunched over a little bit. And they're walking away from where I'm sitting so I can't see their faces. But I hear her upset I hear her angry. I hear her attacking. I hear her saying, you don't understand what I need, and I need you to figure it out. And I am asking, and you are not giving me what I need. And my heart is aching for them because I've been there. And saying that brings up a lot of emotion for me, actually. (laughs) Because I remember the pain and the suffering that came from the years and years and years of feeling so empty and lost and alone and in a battle. And if I'm honest, it wasn't just my marriage. It was all around me. It was how I interacted with the world around me that I felt I felt like I deserved something different. I felt like I needed to defend myself. I felt like there was an attack on me somehow, this sometimes low grade, sometimes more intense. As I watch that couple 
What I felt was two people who are desperately in need of connection, and there was no connection there. That this woman was trying as hard as she could to say what she needed, that she was demanding that he provide for her what she needed, and you could feel his shutdown from across the way. You could feel how there was no part of him that felt safe enough to actually reach out, to take her hand, to take her in his arms and say, everything's going to be okay. I've got you. Because in those situations in our lives, we are in nothing but defense mode, nothing but you can't give me what I need mode, nothing except I am all by myself over here and you don't get it. You don't get it. You aren't right for this. You aren't giving me what I need. And I've been on both sides of that. And it feels horrible on both sides. It feels lonely to be the one demanding what you think that you need. And it feels defensive and disempowering and cutting and angry to have somebody telling you that you can't give them what they need. Both sides are equally as incredibly devastating to our hearts and it doesn't create union it defiles the trust unless there is some major change within them it is the beginning of what could be a short or a long ending of what was once probably a beautiful relationship and that reminds me about a reality show that I continue to try to watch Back when I was drinking, I watched a lot of reality shows. And I think what I liked about reality shows was that I could watch other families, other people in drama. And their drama was worse than my drama. And so it made me feel like, well, at least I'm not as bad as that, which isn't all that great because none of the drama is healthy or good or connecting. It's all about ego. It's all about this human parts of ourselves that just take and want and take and want and suffer and are in so much pain and demand. It's painful. But one of the things that I have always continued to be drawn to because of the personalities and the desire for love and connection are the dating shows. And I started watching Love at First Sight a long time ago. And every single season, my heart gets broken because you see people who were matched up together, who want love, who desperately want to be seen, who want to be connected. And you watch the relationship deteriorate as the season goes on because that part of us that riles up with this defense, this part of us that picks up our weapons, shuts down, breaks off any potential communication, shuts down our heart, closes off, doesn't allow for openings. And in the end, we are our worst selves standing on our emotional battlefield. That's, that's real. So now I catch myself when a new season of Married at First Sight comes on. I like watching the pairing up and I like watching them getting ready and I like watching the weddings. And then I have to quit watching because You can tell that that openness, that willingness to accept people for just who they are because you don't have any expectations yet. You don't have it deep in you of what you think that you want. And as soon as those aspects of ourself start coming up and someone doesn't meet your need one time, we start building up our defense mechanisms and we start preparing for war. I have these vivid memories again, of these, like this couple out for a walk, of going out for walks with Rich. And one of the walks, I remember we had gone to church that day, and the minister had given this talk. And the whole time I was listening to the talk thinking, I hope he's getting this. I hope he's listening. I hope he's hearing what he needs to hear. And yet my heart was wanting us to be connected. And I remember reaching down to hold his hand, and he wouldn't hold my hand. He didn't feel safe. He didn't feel connected. And then after church that day, we went for a walk on the open space that is by our house. And we had the same attack argument that we had had 
over and over and over because we didn't know how to let down our guard. We didn't know how to communicate with each other anymore. We didn't know how to do anything other than blame the other person for not seeing it the way that we wanted to see it. So how does that change? How do you do it different? Well, I'll tell you, it is not easy, but it's worth it. It's so, so worth it because when you can make the shift, when you can start to see the perspective a little bit different, when you take down the battle, when you realize that the attack is really about you, about yourself, about your fear, your part of yourself that is afraid of getting hurt, and you turn within and you lean on your higher power and you start listening to learn instead of listening to tell them what they should do, something changes. But it is about letting go of them, letting go of what you want them to do, how you want it to be for them, and expending all that energy on yourself. Now, I did this in my job, too. Those last two years at my major office manager job were brutal and painful. And every time something happened, I felt like it was a attack on me. I felt like I had to defend myself. I felt like my self-worth was being eroded away, that I had put so much value in who I was in working in this environment and helping build up this business. And when ideas changed and new people came in and I wasn't flexible, I wasn't open, I still wanted to be in control. And when that control was being tested, was being asked to be different, the ideas were asked to be different than what I thought I had set up, I went right into you are going against my value of who I think I am. And so I have nothing I can do except for to defend myself. And in the end, that's attack. When I started reading The Course in Miracles and they started using the word attack, it was a major wake-up call for me because I never thought of myself as being someone who was attacking. I always thought of myself as somebody who was kind and wanted to do the right thing and wanted to be helpful. And yes, I would defend myself. Yes, I wanted to try to explain why I felt the way that I felt. Same thing with Rich out in those fields. It wasn't like I was screaming at him. We made that agreement years and years and years ago when we first got together to not say mean, horrible things we can't take back. But it was this constant forcing him to see it the way that I wanted him to see it and to hear what I needed and why he wasn't giving me what I needed, just like that couple on the sidewalk this morning. And when I was at work in this situation, I was clawing for where I stood. And so I was defending myself, and I was trying to prove my value. And so when I started reading this spiritual content, and it used the word attack, and it started describing it as how we feel like we need to defend ourselves, that we're afraid, that we feel we have to protect. And so we go into our attack mode. I could see the battlefields that I had been standing on. I could see the weapons that I had been using. I could see how it was all about believing that this attack would protect me. It would protect me somehow, and it would prove something somehow. And yet, in the end, what it does is it pushes everybody away. It makes it so there's no space for commonality. There's no space to hear another perspective. There's no space to see the pain that somebody else is feeling, to have empathy for where they're at. That I have always been, it turns out, totally responsible for my own self-worth and my own happiness. And that every time I go on that battlefield, I'm giving them power over how I feel. I'm giving them power about what my self-worth is. I'm giving them power about my value in the world. Instead of taking that for myself and being able to come from the I statements, I'm feeling really isolated right now. I'm really scared. If I had been talking to the company and I was able to really share from my heart, I would have said, 
I don't know what's happening. I feel like things have really changed and I don't feel trusted anymore. And I'm confused as to what's going on. Can you explain to me more clearly why things have changed and if there's something that I could do differently that would regain our better business communication? Can you explain to me where I may have done something that has hurt you? But that's not what I did. I got written up for yelling at one of my coworkers, slamming a door. Man, who was that person? I was aggressive. I was demanding. I was all these things that is not who I am. And in my relationship, I was nitpicky and cutting and... All I could see was all the things that Rich wasn't doing right and why he was falling short and how he wasn't there for me. And I was sure to let him know. Why would he want to participate in a marriage with love and empathy and kindness if that's not what I'm allowing him to be? He has to put up his guard. So we say, well, the other person, the other person's attacking. So all I can do is attack. Interestingly enough, When I started doing this work and we started having conversations where it wasn't about what the other person was doing wrong, but sharing more deeply from our hearts, from our souls about who we are, how we feel, not from a, you did this to me, so I feel this way, but from a, I'm really scared. I'm really nervous. So Rich and I would fight over our son, Alex, and also about Bodhi, but mostly about Alex and what was going on with him and how hard it was for him. And he was just struggling so much. And we had such different opinions about how to fix it. And my way was always a gentler way. And Rich's way was always a more disciplined way. Well, it turns out if we hadn't been fighting so much, if we hadn't been battling for only one way, it would have benefited him better. Because we could have seen the value of each person's perspective and married those two things together, but that's not what we did. We, we fought. We attacked. We felt attacked, so we attacked back. I've seen even since then, since things have been better with my family and in, in personal and in business relationships, I can notice myself when that defense comes up and I start to feel like my bristles are coming up and I feel like somebody is saying something or doing something that is about not thinking that I have value or that what I have to say is important. And I've caught myself at times and been so grateful for those opportunities to continue to learn and to grow and to see that the hook isn't totally unhooked yet, that it's really easy to give them the power Now, this is a spiritual program. Soul recovery is a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. And my belief, my experience, what I have seen is that if we can witness, we can observe, we can see the outside of us that wants certainty, that wants somebody else to be something or do something, bosses, relationships, friends, kids, And we can look at that from an entirely different perspective and turn to ourselves and remember that our most important relationship is our relationship with ourself, is the honesty that we have with ourself about how we feel about ourselves and seeing ourselves not from all of these quote unquote broken places of lack, but starting to see ourselves from the wholeness, the fullness, the compassion, the tenderness, the beauty of who we are, because I believe that that's what spirit sees in you and wants for you. All the suffering that happens in the world is not the purity of the love of spirit. All of that is the suffering of our ego self that is clinging and clutching onto wanting it to be different. Allowing other people to be where they are, whether it's in a relationship, a love relationship, and they can't be present for you in the way that you really need right now, that's painful. That's true. It's not about saying, oh, this doesn't really matter. I don't feel any pain. I don't need anything. 
No, we're human beings. We need love. We need connection. We want and need those things. But letting go of the need, that hungry, thirsty, angry, wanting, demanding need versus seeing somebody for who they are, what they have to offer, where they're at, having compassion for them, letting our guard down, stopping the battle. Every once in a while, Rich and I will have a little sparky something. We had one recently in getting ready to go on vacation, which we're going to do in October with my mom. We're going to Mexico. I'm so excited. And that should be really fun. It should be really exciting. Well, Rich is home with COVID and his fingers almost heal from having been amputated. It's been a hard couple months for him. He's been in a place where he's trying to work. He's trying to get his life back on track. And then as soon as his finger gets a little bit better, he goes and does something fun and he comes back and he's sick. Not great, right? I'm at my mom's house and I'm trying to book airfare and look for Airbnbs and make arrangements. And this should be really fun. This should be something that's enjoyable. And what I caught myself was as we were interacting on the phone and in text messages that I wasn't getting the exact energy that I wanted from him. And I watched myself get irritated and feel like, why can't you be happy and excited? And then I looked at myself and I thought, oh, you're needing something. You're asking for something that maybe he can't give to you right now. And so when we talked about it, we were able to come from compassion, not to be on the battlefield, not to be like, I can't believe that you can't even like be happy for us going on this trip. Why can't you be more involved and more energized about helping me make these decisions? Right? That's what my old self would have said. My new self just said, I feel like you're really far away and it makes me feel really lonely. And he was able to say, yeah, I can see how you feel that way. I'm feeling pretty lonely and depressed over here. This is really hard. I'm sorry I can't be as engaged as I normally would be. Whew. That is so much more connecting. That's so much more supportive. That's so much more allowing each of us to be where we are, to see and hear where the other person is, to have compassion. And in the end, I need to be happy for myself. I need to enjoy what I'm doing for me. Not that I think everyone around me is giving me a pat on the back. Good job, Rachel. You booked all the things on the trip. Aren't you fantastic? I, I need to feel fantastic. So what if those people walking on the sidewalk, what if her comments were more like, I'm feeling really scared and alone. And these things that are happening in my life feel really out of control. And I don't know what to do about it. And he could say, I bet you feel really scared. I'm right here. I don't know how to help you, but I want you to know I love you. Totally different. It allows each person to be where they are. And being aware of what that attack means, it doesn't mean violence. It doesn't mean violent words. It doesn't even mean harsh energy. It's how we feel on the inside about needing to defend. It's about putting our guard up. It's about feeling like it's you versus me versus I see you. I see you as a human. I see you as a tender soul who is also trying to figure this out. And not only that, but I want to see the truth of who you are for your fullness and not for what has been our experience. Letting go of the past experiences is also a key to letting go of the attack and being happy right now, being okay right now, maybe even not happy, maybe just okay. If we're all working on improving ourselves and being better and feeling better and doing better, but we're always punishing each other for what was in the past and reliving those feelings and coming from those feelings, it's really hard to come off the battlefield. It's interesting that thinking about those fights with Rich brought me to tears earlier because I don't think about that stuff anymore. I don't live in the past. There was a lot of really hard years in our marriage, and 
Those were different people then. I was a different person then. Rich was a different person then. We can only be who we are here today. And when I start to pick up those emotional weapons and I start to feel like I need to defend myself anywhere in my life, the only way that I can not battle is for me to choose to put the weapons down. For me to decide what I'm going to do about myself. I don't have control of anyone else. And just a last little piece about it doesn't mean that we lay ourselves out to be walked all over, to not be safe, to not be emotionally safe. The truth is the more that we see things clearly, the more that we come from our healthiest self, we can see clearly situations that are not safe, that we are not trying to pretend that something is out there and we're trying to maneuver it and manipulate it and convince ourselves in denial that it's something that it isn't. We can actually just look at it, at those relationships, at those jobs, at those situations, and say, this isn't healthy for me. And I'm not going to ask you to change, but I can remove myself from these situations. And some of those are hard ones. Some of those are family members. Some of those are marriages. It's about removing the blame removing the shame, removing the guilt, removing the resentments, looking at a different perspective, putting our emotional guard down, but being in the strength, the fullness of who we are without needing to defend. If you want work with this and you want support on this, this is a big one. Again, I'm here to help you as your spiritual coach. And I just want to thank everyone who is supporting this podcast and helping it spread. It continues to grow and my heart just swells knowing that we are reaching more people with soul recovery, that more people are taking responsibility for their own happiness and finding a happy and healthy life. We're taking our power back and we are choosing the lives that we were here and intended and meant to be and letting go of the pain and suffering of giving our power and our control to everyone else. Thank you for being part of this community. Until next time, namaste. Are you wondering, how do I go deeper on my path to soul recovery? Or how do I support this great podcast? Well, here's how. Here's your call to action. If you're ready for real inner change, and would like to work directly with me, visit the website and book a coaching session. I'm here to support you on your unique path. I'm here to help you let go of the past, to deepen your connection with your higher power, whatever that is for you, and to discover and then step forward into a happy and healthy life. You can also become part of our soul recovery community. One way is to join the support group. It's the first Monday of every month. It's by Zoom from 6 to 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and you can register on the website to get your Zoom link. Recover your souls on social media. Of course, there's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, lots of ways to connect, and there's even a private Facebook group that will allow for more communication and conversation about soul recovery. There is also an extra bonus episode every Friday if you are an Apple Podcast subscriber or Patreon member. I'd also love all of the listeners to subscribe on the website so that I can keep you informed on what's going on with the podcast, the community, with me, and anything that's up and coming and new and great about soul recovery. Also, if you just take a little bit of time to give me five stars, a quick review, and to share the podcast with your friends and family, we're helping even more people to have soul recovery in their lives. If this podcast is providing you spiritual nourishment and inspiration, thank you, thank you for going to the website and pushing the donate button, whatever donation feels right to you. This means so much to me because I have this enormous mission of sharing soul recovery with the world and your donations, your bookings, your subscriptions, your being part of this community is helping that to happen. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul.